the first one. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Ben and Sander. Thank you very much. So I just wanted to get a bit of clarity. On the chat, I was suggesting um, that we use the subscription, the unsubscribe to unsubscribe from the list, the list of um of subscriptions. <laughs> and Sander said no, that's all wrong. So I wanted to know um No, no, no. I was I was just uh pulling your leg oh, it, it's okay. not all wrong it is like uh the best thing to do is like have a single subscription or even better async pipe and angular and combine everything using combined latest or one of the other combined operators because everything needs to go to one view in the end anyway if that is a little bit too complex and you're not that uh that involved with rxjs it's often simpler to have like a couple of subscribes and i don't i really don't mind if there are like three or four but really i've last week i've seen i've refactored a component that had like 60 subscribes in the controller wow and wow. Wow. and on top of that it had over 140 async pipes in the template wow yeah yeah and then there are we have a performance issue and I was, <laughs> duh. So that Sweet. depends. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I think you've, I think you've kind of answered the question that I was going to, you know, go into, which was that, you know, let's say for example, I had a page that had three, uh, that made three requests. The first one was um, using the service for notifications. Um, in the center of the page, you have all the feeds from various sources, and on the right hand side, you had a chat. And you wanted to load all the conversations on the right hand side, for example, that would be what three um three observables. But on, on the basis of what you just said, it seems like you're basically saying use combined latest to kind of put them all into one. And no, then... well, that's not needed because there are really separate concerns on separate components in the page. So they are yes. not in the same component. Mm -hmm. So uh, it doesn't really make sense to use combined latest to, to combine them unless yeah. they are really tied together as a group. So, yeah. yeah. So, so if if you've got like um, like, and, and this isn't any framework. If, quite frequently, the best thing you can do is have like a smart component at a top level, and then a bunch of display components underneath. And the reason that you can structure things that way is if you have like, let's just say you have your view, and you've got a chat on this side, and some other display in the middle, and one other display at the top, and they each have their own bits of data. If there's, there's two ways to go about this. One is you could say each one of those components is smart and knows about what data it needs to load, uh, which is fine. That's, that's totally fine. But if for some reason those components need to communicate with one another, then uh, sometimes you want to make each one of those components a dumb component is what I call it, which is it doesn't know how to load data. All it knows is how to display data and how to take events and like, you know, event to the parent, right? So you would then have the top level component be responsible for, I'm going to you know, set up all these observables that I want to uh, subscribe to, to, to send into these other components and just send them via properties on the components, right? So you could just pipe async those things into the properties on the component, yeah. component will update that way. And when you get events out of the component, uh, and the, the nice thing about that is you can then take those other components if you need to use them elsewhere, or use other data inside them or whatever, or test them much, much easier because there's just less going on inside of each one of those components. So, and it, it actually goes back to um, kind of like uh, principles of uh, just writing functions, for example, like the, the people talk about separation of concerns and I think that's uh, kind of a mudgy, like a mungy sort of thing. Um, really, what it is is uh, uh, try your best to like create components or functions, depending on what you're talking about, uh, that uh, specialize in one thing. And you know, if it's doing more than one thing, take the the other thing and move it out somewhere else. And you know, that's that's the same sort of idea. So, with uh, whether you're writing Angular or React or Vue or Ember, or you go back in time, you're writing Backbone or whatever, uh, the end of the day, it's a good idea to have like, decide what, what top level parent needs to be smart, and then have the other ones underneath be the dumb components that are just displaying things. And then with Angular, you can use pipe async to take like, here's my observable of data. I'm going to use pipe async to shove that data into these components with properties. Um, and maybe, like maybe with your three components, 
each one of those does need to be smart for whatever reason. Uh, but again, you can under those have a child that actually does nothing but display. Uh, if that makes sense. I mean, don't over engineer it, but yeah, yeah. I think, thank you very much. I mean, that, that was, that was the reason that was what I was, um, that was the architecture that I was, I was, um, thinking of in terms of having those three. So basically having a small component at the top that loads all the necessary information and then, and then async pipes them as inputs into the child components that would be responsible for displaying the information and sending a, sending, um, an event through the output above. But it, but it was mainly a thing of, okay, well, uh, how would I, I mean, not even how would I, but what would you suggest would be a better way considering um, what was mentioned on the chat? So that's, that was essentially what I was trying to, to understand. But thank you very much for, <laughs> for clearing that up, Sanders, because <laughs> I literally yeah. took it as a, as a serious thing, yeah. And, and, and Angular, I would say, when in doubt, try to use pipe async to subscribe. Uh, it all, it all could, but the, you can't always do that. I mean, mm. there's certain things where you need to like run a background process, or maybe you need an escape hatch and you actually are doing direct DOM manipulation because you're trying to speed something up or, or whatever. In which case, uh, I'm, I'm with Sander on this. Try to have one subscription, parent subscription, that you kind of add things to and then unsubscribe in one spot uh, and you're on destroy. Would that mean? Would you say behavior subjects would be um, is a consideration for that? So, for example, you create a behavior subjects at the top level, um, and then let's say, for example, you retrieve information from one, or you add um, uh, what's the word like a, a tap or something, and you just pass it in through um, that behavior subject dot next, if that makes sense. And then you subscribe to that, and you could pass that down. <laughs> That's not you, you, you have two, two heads bumpy now. <laughs> so um, basically, passing something to a subscriber is the same thing as using a share replay almost. It, it's not exactly the same thing, but it boils down to the same thing. You are going to cache things. And right. if you are need to cache things, that makes um, that makes sense. Uh, but then you don't need to. Uh, uh, behavior subject for that you can just use a share replay instead which yeah. internally uses a behavior subject if i'm right i'm not entirely sure uh share share replay uses actually a replay subject uh, i don't know if i don't know if uh if everyone's seen this yet by the way but um in version seven of arcgs we have and i don't know if the angular world is is quite caught up with version seven but we actually have sh the share operator the share operator now has configuration where you can make it behave like share replay or behave like whatever you want. And you can very specifically say under the hood, I want to use this uh, subject and I want to reset this subject on complete or on error or on ref count zero. And so you can very explicitly define the behavior uh, because a lot of people get confused about share replay. Um, Share replay, and this is going to kind of derail and change the subject, but share replay, the default behavior, originally we had an operator called cache, like it was literally called cache. And the purpose of this operator was to be like, oh, I've got an expensive operation that I don't want to perform twice. I don't care if you subscribe to it and you've unsubscribed from, from it. I want to finish it, make sure it's done, and then the next person that subscribes to it just gets that value. And so that was the original intent of cache and cache was renamed to share replay because people didn't like the name cache. So, uh, because cache comes with all sorts of, you know, how do I invalidate it and all these other questions. So, um, the, uh, so share replay's default behavior when you subscribe to it is to never unsubscribe until it completes or errors, uh, even if everybody else. So, there's a, there's a bit on it now that you can flip called ref count true. And that will give you the behavior of if everyone unsubscribes, it unsubscribes. Uh, because the world was quite literally split 50, 50 on whether or not, including core team members of RxJS and whether or not which behavior was correct. Uh, now I think given both that, are correct. Right. So, so given that we now have just share everybody's friend share which has the same default behavior if you don't pass any configuration to it, but uh, is now fully configurable to very explicitly describe what it's going to do uh, in the configuration. So I, I highly recommend people go check that out because when you when you look at it, it's going to say like, um, you know, share, and then you say the uh, connector is this type of subject, uh, right. or if you don't if you don't pass one, it'll be a regular subject, and then after that you say 
um, what when those subjects reset under the hood. So then I I love when you're talking, but we have three more people that have a question. Sure. So I think I go to Innocent right now. I think he's had his handle the longest. I'm not sure. I'm not. So go ahead, ask your question. You're still muted though. Okay. Uh, I do believe you do allow uh, no questions because I've, I've questioned that in as much as that I, I think I listen to the difference. Okay, my question is, what's the difference between combined latest and folk join? Last time I tried using both of them, they gave me the same result, but then they continue telling me it's different. What's like the use cases for combined latest and folk join? Sure, sure. So uh, fork join, just to describe it, mm -hmm. is more like uh, promise all, if you're familiar with that. So what mm -hmm. fork join does is it says, oh, I'm going to immediately subscribe to everything that you give me. And then I'm going to wait for them to complete and just give you the last value from it. Right. So so if you've got an observable of one thing, fork join is going to behave very similarly to combine latest. Now, what combine latest does this combined latest says, I'm going to subscribe to all of your observables. And when I have at least one value from each one, I'm going to emit all the values. And then when any one of those gives me another value, I'm going to emit all the updated values again. So it's always going to, no matter which one. So if you have three different observables, uh, it has to wait for each one of them to give you one value first. And then after that, for every, single time any one of those emits anything, it's going to update the latest values and give them to you over and over and over again. So combine latest, the use case for combine latest would be like, if you're going to write like a calculator or something. So you're going to say like, oh, I'm going to have a stream of number A, I'm going to have a stream of number B, and I'm going to have a stream of number C. And depending on um, when, when those come in, I'm going to add them all together, right? So every single time I need at least one number A, I need at least, at least one number B, I need at least one number C. And every single time I have a new set of those, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to um, add them together and give you the results. So that would be like a combined latest. So combined latest is more like a long-term streaming thing where fork join is more useful with like, if I have, if I have just uh, like HTTP requests, or I have, um, you know, something where I'm I'm calculating values and waiting for for them to finish. So they, you're you're very right that they are very similar, um, but like fork join would be kind of like a combine latest take last sort of thing. So that's okay. That's that's the the difference between the two. If that makes Got sense. It. Oh yeah, it does. So if I'm getting if I'm getting you right, because I think I was using combine. Combine latest. So instead of declaring the uh, the observables as variables, I would pass the function. So with the function now, I can't read its changes anymore. So it's like combined latest works with observable variables because I can change them elsewhere. And like uh, with function that I can just pass um, an observable um, uh, from uh, like an HTTP request that I just do and then finish. Yeah, yeah. So, all right, honest, honestly, the, the best way to look at it is probably just the last thing I said, which is uh, fork join is combine latest take last one. That's that's kind of <laughs> that's basically what fork join is. Yeah. Um, uh, there's some minor differences, but not not very much. That's that's primarily what it is. All right, nah, you solved my million dollar question. Thanks. All right. Yeah. Okay, I think we can now go to Sergio. I think you're next. Yeah, you. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hi. Hello, Ben. Thanks for Hi. joining. So uh, my question is on um, is about um, uh, marbles, uh, Rx JS unit testing with uh, marbles. Um, I cannot really understand uh, the difference between the call with the hot. Uh, function uh, that provides an observable when okay. it comes to testing uh, because if you want to test a property of, uh, of a component i don't know i really understand how you use it uh, with the cold and the hot uh, function it seems to me like um, i don't know difficult to to match or to combine 
Cool, cool. Uh, let me, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna share my screen really quick. Uh, share, so I can bring up like stack blitz or something. So um, with this, All right, so we've got our test scheduler. Actually, you know what, I'm not even gonna bother with this. I'm just gonna show you a comment. But but basically it's like this. If you have hot, mm -hmm. source one is hot, and then you've got this bit here, and it kind of goes A, B, C, D, right? Okay. And uh, you've got, let's say you've got another one, um, source two, which is cold. Let me move these over so they line up. And we'll do Z, Y, X. I don't know why we're going backwards in the alphabet, but there we are. This, for the duration of your test, is always active, okay? So it's, it's just constantly running. So if, if you've got some assertion in here that is like you expect something to be, um, you know, here, that's going to be relative to this. Now, let's just say that right here, we wanted to subscribe to this guy. Like mm -hmm. this is, this is uh, going to end up. So the result um, of that would be like, oh, I've got this, and then this this is cold. But like, really, what ends up happening is this gets moved forward, right, to wherever that's subscribed because cold. This isn't active until you subscribe to it. Hot, okay. this is active for the entire test. So hot, hot is like, um, think of it like electricity, right? Like, so if, if someone has a, has a wire in their hand and they're like, this wire is hot, that tells you that if you touch it, there's already electricity going through it, don't do that, right? If they say, say this wire is cold, then that means there's no electricity in it until you flip the switch, right? So the, the difference between the two and when it comes to a test is during the course of the test, this is always running. Okay. Uh, right. Unless you unsubscribe from it or something. And uh, uh, whereas this is not running until you subscribe to it. So hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, it does. And how can you use now uh, in this example that you wrote, uh, uh, how can you use those uh, with the, uh, an uh, observer, an observable property in a component that you want to test? So that's a good question. Um, honestly, the primary use case for the test scheduler was to test your own operators for the most part, because these ah, operators, represent okay. the, I mean, you can definitely use it. And what you would do is you create like, you'd be like, oh, I'm going to create, usually I think I would go with like a cold observable. So I'd be like, okay, so I'm going to create this cold observable that represents uh, get data or something like that. And we'll say that we want this to take some arbitrary amount of time, it gives me the data, and then it stops. And then we would say D is some data. Now, you would go and you would get your, uh, and it's been a while, so I'm sorry, since I've messed with uh, um, the Angular testing, but basically you take your component instance, and you'd set like, you know, data service, like you probably mock it in some way, like, mm -hmm. oh, let's see, what do they do? Um, I guess it's, uh, is it Jasmine mock or something like that or spy uh, on? Uh, yeah, Jasmine the dot uh, create a spy object, something like that. Yeah, so, something like that. So you so yeah. spy, get data and return, um, return value. your yeah. get data. Yeah, observable, right? So you could do that. And then once that's going, you're going to have to figure out like how you're going to start now the the problem becomes that, uh, you know, you've got button presses or something that's going to kick this off. And so honestly, what I recommend instead of going this route is instead um, just going and saying, okay, well, I'm going to say uh, uh, data subject or something like that, new subject, right? And then you just put the data subject in here. And what you do then is you say component instance, you know, click button. And then afterwards, 
you you can say data subject next, you know, mm -hmm. the data in there, and then you run your you know ex ex assertions. Expect you yeah. know component instance blah to be awesome, or you know whatever you're doing. So like honestly, this form of testing with subjects, like people look at marbles and they think, oh, that's like it's got these cool things, and that's what RxJS uses to test and whatever. Um, Honestly, this is how I would go about testing most components. Or if I didn't just be like, oh, and return of, you know, the data in here and just return like a, instead of even doing this. The advantage to doing the subject is this is totally synchronous. And this allows me to wait a little bit in my code to execute what I'm trying to do after the button's clicked, right? So. That like I, I tend to reach for this a little bit more because maybe I want to you know expect you know component instance loading to be true right yeah. and then afterwards expect it to be false uh, after so like yeah so that's that's sort of the route I would go with this. Um, the other thing too is, is you should be able to assert like that your, your actual component, like the HTML has changed and that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, I, I would go this route over using the test scheduler, the test scheduler though, like if you've got, if you ever find yourself writing uh, code in your component where it's like, you know, some service dot pipe, and then you've got like tons of operators in here. Uh, you know, your merge mapping and whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, you can take all of these out, make your own operator, like literally just take them all out somewhere else, like outside of your component completely, make your own operator and do like that. And then you can test that with okay. mar with marble tests or something because it, it that's, but that's more like if you're concerned about weird concurrency issues or, mm. you know, what happens if this arrives before this and so on and so forth. That's where uh, marble uh, diagrams are most helpful. So hopefully that, that answers the question. Yeah, yeah, completely. Thank you so much. Yep. So my whole meal is gone. I'm, I'm ready. I think, um, is Hans still here? He had his hand off. I think he's gone. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Don. That's that's. I feel so bad. I joined this late. Why I'm sorry. I feel so bad. I probably question in the chat. He's still on the chat. No, he actually pasted his question on the chat. I mean, in the messages. Oh, let's see what he did ask right. them. Is there a, is there a way to notify the source observable that? one or more subscribers have unsubscribed, similarly to the finally operator when it completes. Hmm. You know, question, is there any way to notify the source observable that one or more subscribers have unsubscribed? So I don't, I don't see, you must have asked it before I joined. So, um, Oh, you... I will copy. Yeah and then it will be on the bottom. There it is. Uh, is there a way to notify if the source observable, uh, the, notify the source observable that one or more subscribers have unsubscribed, similar to the finally operator when it completes? So uh, I would presume this is like, oh, I want to know, like, hmm. Like it, there's a way to know that everybody unsubscribed, right? Like you can do finally with like a share or something like that uh, to know if one or more subscribers have unsubscribed. Um, uh, I mean, right now, the best you could do is kind of run your own counter. Um, it's not really a use case that comes up like reactive programming, generally speaking, isn't like a, a thing where, uh, like anything wants to introspect on any different piece of it. Um, but, uh, I mean, you could, you could wrap something in a defer, 
put a counter on it and then right after like in a finally decrement the counter and then at any given point you could see what that counter was um similarly you could take that counter value and next it through some subject or whatever so you had some event that told you that someone had subscribed or unsubscribed um it's really hard to say with about like i don't know know what the use case for this would be there might be better ways to solve the same problem but I think um, the, the use case is the same use case Natalie had is um, I want to know if there are any observables that are not unsubscribed uh, on a certain point oh, in time. I see. So. I see. So that's that's interesting. Like you can you can technically do that. Um, it's I frown upon it a little, but you can technically do that by um, taking an observable. Uh, subscribing to it with a subject and then everyone subscribes to the subject and then you can look at the length of the observers on the subject and you can see like how many observers does this have um, we just added uh, added a bit for like has subscribers um, because uh, for the most part what people wanted when they do that is they just want to see if anything's subscribed at all um, but it's interesting. I haven't, I haven't really come across. I'd be interested in the use case for coming across knowing the exact count. But if you wanted to know the exact count, you could. I, I don't think it's about the observer. exact count. I think it's about having a count. Um, yeah, yeah. So there's a new, um, there's a new feature uh, in ArcGIS seven actually, where it's like, generally speaking, people can just check the observer's length on a on a subject, but. We, we have a new property on there that just tells you whether or not anything's subscribed. And it, under the hood, it checks the same, the length. But we wanted to kind of stop exposing that because someone could go in and be like, the length zero, and like, you know, or just do things they're not supposed to do. <laughs> so. So, how is it named? Has subscribers? Uh, I'm, I'm actually checking on that right now. Okay. And um, it belongs to an observable, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. it actually belongs to a subject. Aha, uh -huh. aha. Uh -huh. So it aha. Uh -huh. It needs to be a subject. Yes. So you can always check the length of observer of observers. Mm -hmm. um, well, because you can't check it on a, a, a observables themselves are stateless, right? They're just functions that when you call subscribe, they execute something under the hood. Um, observed is the actual name of the property. So you can check. If you have um, a subject, you can check dot observed and it returns a Boolean as to whether or not it's observed at all. So that's perfect. Yeah. Mateo, you can use Angular uh, RX7 with Angular 12, but you need to manually install it. Uh, yeah, that was going to be of, my next question. Yeah. There are a yeah. couple of edge <laughs> cases, but um, as of version 12. Point one or two, I'm not entirely sure it's usable and uh, Angular will not blow up if you install RX7. They are not uh, putting it in by default, but it works. Yeah, yeah. I noticed that my version was bumped to 6.6.7 and we ran migration like last week. Yeah. So also there, you guys are deprecating scheduler. That's going to be, some trouble for us, but okay. Why why so, is scheduler being deprecated? So schedulers, um, we're we're deprecating passing schedulers to certain things. We're not deprecating schedulers entirely. So there is a lot of uh, extra code in places where we were allowing people to pass in schedulers that wasn't beneficial to 95, 99% of people that were using RxJS. And so it was bloating, like, so what would end up happening is we had code in there that would be like in of, for example, it would be like, if you pass a scheduler, run all of this code, else run all of this code. So there was like every single thing had doubled the logic in it, one for schedulers and one for not, not having schedulers. And instead, now we actually have an API, and this, was, this is in version six already called scheduled. So scheduled is exactly like from, only you have to pass a scheduler to it. And you can use it for of, you can use it for like, instead of of you do scheduled, some array of values, uh, comma scheduler, uh, instead of from you'd use 
scheduled, whatever you're going to pass uh, scheduler. And then of course there's um, schedule on, and, and, I'm sorry, subscribe on and observe on operators that can be used for everything else. So um, the idea is we're trying to partition scheduling into a smaller set of things and not make everyone else pay the cost of um, dealing with schedulers when they're using the library because most mo generally most people aren't using schedulers very i think very for, much i think for most use cases you will encounter the subscribe on is the easiest way to go you can easily refactor whatever you have to like two operators and put all, subscribe on in the next in the next one or just above i'm always forgetting which goes where i think mm -hmm. Dimitri has the next question, and after that we have Matteo. Yeah, I have a simple one. So I love playing around with RxJS and learning it, and StackBlitz is uh, one great platform where I do that. However, as you were just uh, using it, I saw the same issue that I've been running into, which is lack of typings do you by any chance know if it's something that we can uh, just uh, install maybe and make it work or is it something that stack blitz team needs to fix it it seems to be an issue with stack blitz although i've noticed code sandbox is doing the same thing and like it might it might end up being that we restructure things in our end when we deploy it so the 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 issue at hand is that bundlers don't have a problem with this, but for some reason, some environments do, like for example, StackBlitz. Uh, we, RxJS is used in a lot of places. So it's used in Node, it's used like in, we, it's used by <laughs> Angular, it requires like a specific uh, ESM that we're outputting because of zones. Um, and the problem is we deploy one, two, three, I think like four different types of modules in our bun in our in our in, in our node module different module types and then one uh, set of typings that's shared between all of them and some of the IDEs so it's not actually like the bundler itself is fine with it but some of the IDEs like um, Visual Studio Code had an issue with version seven for a little while but that's been resolved uh, but like they probably need to fix something as far as their module resolution goes in Stackblitz. But basically what happens is the IDE is like, oh, I'm gonna find the nearest or the first uh, like JavaScript file that I'm actually gonna use. And then I'm gonna look for a DTS file right next to it. And if the DTS file is not right next to it, then I freak out and I don't know what sort of typings, I don't know where the typings are. And it's not smart enough to look at the package JSON to know where the typings live, where all of the bundlers and Visual Studio Code and these other things don't have a problem with it. So uh i'm i've been fighting with this for a while and like i don't know i i'm i'm guessing that at some point we're just gonna have to give up and either put all of the typings next to one of the module types so instead of having all the type types in their own folder like set them all next to esm uh 2015 or whatever or uh and then tell all the other module types that that's where they need to go look um but the whole i don't know the whole the whole thing is a bit of a nightmare to to accommodate like if if it were up to me i would just be like all right so we're deploying cjs and uh es 2020 and your bundler better know how to like ratchet that down on its own and we'll keep all the typings next to cjs or something like that like but our every single time we've tried to like wean down the number of different module types we publish or reduce the size of our NPM module, uh, somebody freaks out. Uh, I put my foot down about AMD. I did kill that. <laughs> the, but the the rest of it, um, it's, yeah, it's it's an issue. I've seen it, I know about it, it bothers me too. Um, hopefully we can get it resolved soon, either on our end or uh, on the Sackblitz side. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. And yeah, totally. Package JSON has information where typings are. So it sounds like a should be somewhat a simil, uh, simple fix on StackBlitz side. But yeah. Yeah. 
it's it's uh, it's unfortunate that there's been a lot of back and forth getting things to work. So for a while, just the, the top level exports worked for Visual Studio Code, but deep exports were not working. So and it was the same. It was a similar sort of issue. Uh, and I went back and forth with both TypeScript and uh, VS Code people about that. And the, there's like a hacky solution in place in our library to make that work. So there's just a lot of a lot of pain in the module community. Okay. Hell, thank you for being on top of that. All right. Um, Matteo also has his hand up. So Matteo, go ask your question. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so hi Ben. Uh, I am wondering now if I haven't read enough about subscriptions because I have like digested the documentation of operators, but in the other hand, subscriptions are a little bit fuzzy because sometimes I wonder if I am I'm, I'm using switch map with take until where to put the take until. Uh, maybe before and after, or the whole subscriptions handling, how to manage all, all of them, like uh, collecting into a single subscription to the subscribe. I, I'm not sure if there are examples, like for enterprise or um, something. Well, I think I'm gonna, I'll, um, I'll go back to sharing my window here really quick. So the, um, the thing, and I'm just gonna wipe this out and type inside here, but the thing about uh, observables is like this. So if you've got, let's just say you've got some source and then you pipe it to like a map and then a filter uh, and so on. Like what this ends up looking like is you've got your source and then that goes to uh, like the map subscriber and that goes to filter subscriber. And like this doesn't happen until you call subscribe right and you give it some you know function or some observer or whatever there and then that goes to this so you could imagine that this whole line here represents a single uh subscription now if uh if you put a take until in here take until and then there's some other source in here like other thing other is going to be like this. So we've got this take until, right? Other, it's going to, this, this guy here is going to subscribe to this other thing. And it's got its own subscription. And we don't really care what it does. And really, this is just parallel. Like it, it's linked, it's, it shares, it's shared in subscription. But like this, this fella here, whenever it emits a value, like something, then this is just like, okay, tear down this whole subscription and, and tell this guy we're complete, right? So that's, that's the purpose of take until. Now, um, I'm gonna take this take until out of there. So, so the take until, it's, if you put it here, it's controlling this subscription right up above there, right? Actually, I will, I'll put that back, take until. All right. Now, if I was to go and have the same thing, but instead of map and filter, do like um, switch map or some flattening operator. And then inside of there, you've got other source pipe to take until. And I'll even, I'll put like a map and a filter in there. So now we've got this big long thing. And what that's gonna do is it's, we've got our source. It goes to our switch map and switch map is going to take the value and spin up a totally for every single value that comes in it's going to spin up another one from other this guy right here a different subscription internally which goes to its own map and then goes to its own filter right and then it goes to its own take until now, this take until controls what goes downstream, and what goes downstream is it comes back down to switch map, basically, right? So it's, it's coming down here to switch map uh, and then continues on its merry way. So if, if I was to put something after switch map, like another filter or something, it's going to go down to our filter, 
and then ultimately to our observer here at the end. Like, so take until in this case controls this subscription. So take until always controls everything what's upstream. But when you've got a switch map, it's always, or a merge map even, it's always doing this. If, if I were to take this whole thing and change this to a merge map, then what would happen is this is gonna end up producing multiple uh, copies of this, right? Where it's just gonna do this over and over and over again for, for a merge map. And all of those things are gonna feed down to here. So any given take until can kill this, right? But not this. If I, if I was to move the take until to after, then, you know, and the take until was here, or I was to add another one there for some reason, like here, take until, then this can kill all of these and that, right? Like it's gonna, it's, it's, it can kill everything upstream. So whenever you're doing a flattening operator, like merge map, uh, concat map, concat map would look a lot like this because it does one at a time. Um, uh, merge map is going to look like this and so on. Like, uh, it's, it's kind of branching off a new observable, a new subscription and merging it into your current subscription. If, if that helps you kind of visualize what it's doing. Yeah. 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 I, I just wonder because in, in our company, we are using take until like right after the source. But if the source already emitted, the switch map will be already uh, branched the subscription, and we will need like a take until at the end of the pipe. Yeah, right. So, all right. So the, the another behavior. So all of these flattening operators, merge map, switch map, concat map. So all of them. Let's see, merge map, switch map, concat map, uh, exhaust map. And there's probably a few others. Every single one of those. There's, there's multiple observable, ob observables involved. There's the source, which is the one that's coming in, uh, or the one that's directly before this, right? And then there's the inner observables. And the inner observables are these ones here. And so in order for these to send complete down here, like to, to whoever's listening, not only does the source have to complete, which is what happens when you do a take until here, but all of the inner observables have to complete. So all of these have to complete in order for it to send a completion downstream. So that's that's kind of what you're seeing. So if, if I was to put a take until you know up here and then go to my my switch map, right? Like it's okay. it's going to um Mateo. It, it's gonna be like, oh, unsubscribe from this, send a complete down here. And these, if these are still running, this this doesn't end. So, okay, Matteo, is this about unsubscribing on destroy? Yeah, yeah, of, of yeah. course, uh, on destroy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the the thing is, you should not be using an operator for this. I'm giving this advice for a long time now. Uh, just store this, uh, just store the subscriber and, and unsubscribe. It is like one line extra code. But you do you don't have to think about all the things Ben just talked about. Because the unsubscribe will always work. It's simpler. And if you make it like a habit to store your subscriber and uh, uh, using you can put them in subscriber at. If you store your subscribers and you unsubscribe, all of those things become unneeded and you don't need to think about all of this. Yeah. I, so I, I agree with that. I agree with that. It if, will trigger that. It's equivalent to the take until at the end, so it will complete like. Yeah, but you end. always have to think about it. If you just store your subscriber, it's just subscriber unsubscribe done. Mm -hmm. Right. It will yeah, always yeah. work. There are no edge cases. You don't have to think about which is the most important thing. You don't have to think about it every time. If you use an operator, take until, or even a specialized operator, I wrote like five different. Uh, specialized operators to automatically unsubscribe on destroy, which was stupid in hindsight. Um, just store the subscriber unsubscribe. That is yeah. the safest way that works always. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to go over your entire pipe to see if you are doing something that might kick off your take until somehow. Yeah. So 
That's the I, easier I, way to do I it. I totally agree. I totally agree. Um, there's a, and just to show everybody this, there's a future of ArcGIS, and it's not going to happen anytime soon, where when you subscribe to some observable, like what we want is we want to get to where you can pass a function, like, or an observer there, or whatever you're going to do. So you can console log out whatever you're going to get, but then actually be able to pass an abort signal in, um, either like, like that or like this. So it's configurable. But uh, where if, if, you, if you do something like this, then what we can easily do with an API like this is you can make uh, lint rules or whatever that complain uh, if you don't pass this in, right? Because like, it's harder to make a lint rule that checks to see if you're, if you're unsubscribing than it is to check to see if you actually passed a, a proper signal into something. So, Inevitably, um, and this is, I'm not trying to confuse people, but inevitably, instead of, like, I'm hopeful that instead of having, you know, the situation where we do all this um, and then have to call unsubscribe later, uh, these abort signals will be so ubiquitous because people are using them for fetch and they're using them for, um, like, other events and things like, believe it or not, they're actually going to start supporting this for tearing down um, uh, DOM events, right? Uh, which I can show you in a second. But like, uh, instead of us having something different than everybody else, the entire world will have a single camp cancellation mechanism, which are these signals, and you can just pass them around. And the ergonomics of it is that now you can make a lint roll that's like, hey, you called it like this. And there's a problem. There should have been there should have been something here, right? Like this is, you know, needs signal or whatever, like some some lint rule that complains and makes sure that you don't accidentally uh, not supply some sort of cancellation. Now, whether or not you call abort on it or cancel it or whatever, that's uh, that's beside the point. But um, yeah, nice. signal on destroy. NG on destroy. Yeah. So NG on destroy. What you really want to do, though, what what uh, is for now, and I'm sorry if that other thing was confusing. If you have a component, is just create like a parent subscription or just you know a component subscription, new subscription, and then in your NG on destroy, just like this dot component subscription unsubscribe and that's it and then everywhere that you're doing anything like you know you know load data or whatever um, anywhere that you're doing that uh, you would just say this to component subscription ah, why can't I type there so you do you just do something like this instead, and um, you know life's life's going to be better better. So this way, you know, you're guaranteed that this this is going to tear down the whole thing, whether or not there's you know take tills or switch maps or whatever, and it's lighter weight technically. Okay, uh, Ben. Han returned, and perhaps he has some additions to his question. Perhaps we did understand this question wrong, so perhaps he can ask it, ask it again, sure. so we can provide the context. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hi, Ben. So um, this, the question I was asking is like, um, is there any way to notify the source observable that something has unsubscribed in the context that um, what uh, Sanders told me uh, earlier, uh, we are also like working with the almost strict um, no subscription rules. So basically, everything is being pushed into an async pipe in Angular, so that handles the uh, teardown for us. But sometimes, or in some edge cases, I want to notify a global service that a component has unsubscribed. And uh, I wonder if there is a mechanism like the finally uh, operator that can notify the service that one, uh, uh, one component has unsubscribed. So specifically, uh, one one interesting thing, and this is this is going to help you right now. But one interesting thing is we were talking about adding, uh, because this does come up, uh, adding 
to tap another handler for unsubscribe, right? Because uh, tap is like, oh, you can get next, you can get air, you can get complete. It's just to get introspect on what's going on in a stream. And so we were talking about adding to tap, like what about one for subscribe and one for unsubscribe? Because sometimes people oh, okay. want to know those things. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's something that is on the chart. And we might even get that added here in version seven here pretty soon. But until then, what you can do is you can be like, you can make like an operator called like, you know, on uh, unsubscribe or something like that, right? And give it some function. I'm going to type as any because I'm super lazy. Um, Could you share the screen again? I think I'm not oh, seeing. Oh, sorry, I'm not, I'm not. I forgot I wasn't <laughs> sharing my screen. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I need to do that. Share. Um, may I ask why you cannot just um, signal something from the only story handler? the service uh um well we are right now implementing storybook and we want to have like really a separated concern of the ui where we bind the data with async pack directly into the component and want to completely separate the store and the, all the services which handle like logic and so on with the ui so it's not always given that there's a coupling between uh, the components where i can do that so i want to see if there's a remote way to notify the source observable if something like this happens. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. So let's just see. So I can go in here and be like, um, let's state, uh, I don't know, nothing, idle, something like that. And then we can return uh, a tap that says, if there's an error, then set state to aired. And oh, let's oh, let's bring that in. There's no actions available. Oh, that's right, because StackBlitz doesn't like us right now. Um, <laughs> and then this is state is complete. And then right after that, we can type this whole thing to finalize. And then finalize, we can just say um, if uh, error. I'm sorry, if state equals, and I called it idle, I think, idle, yeah. then call the function, right? And so this is you know, kind of how you can make your on un, unsub, right? Because then you've got this, this thing where you can be like, hey, I can see if I've erred or complete, or you could even just be like, um, change this to a Boolean or, or whatever. Uh, it doesn't have to be this you know, orchestrated, but uh, you can just be in here and be like, look, if error complete fires, change this state. And if that state doesn't change, then uh, so let's say let's go is unsub equals true. We'll change this back. We'll change this to is unsub equals false. Now it's a little bit more obvious, but. Um, I was wondering, this code would execute only if the observable completes, isn't it? Because if uh, uh, in the async pipe, it shown, it's a simply it's a simple unsubscribe call. So would this so no, code so this, actually be? This would this would execute in all cases. So let's let's um, wow, bring it in from types. That's pretty cool. What is that about? <laughs> okay, <laughs> what is this? What is this doing? All right, so I'm gonna just pull all of this stuff in from Arcs. Yes. Hey, look at this, you see this? We're pulling in map from ArcGIS in version 7.2. Um, so let's just, let's just kill all this stuff. And what else did I need? I need a tap, I need to finalize. Oh, and cool. I think that's it. All right, so, so I'm gonna come down here. I think you here. need another comma. I need another comma, where's my comma? Oh yeah, it doesn't like that. All right, so I have all that, I'm gonna, Eliminate this so we can look at whatever. So here's my operator. And if I set up, let's say, an interval, why does it keep doing that? It's so annoying. <laughs> interval. All right. Here's my source is an interval. It goes every, let's say, half a second. And then I also want to clear my console every time because I don't like that being so messy. Um, all right, so if that's my source and I'm gonna subscribe to it just to make sure it's working. So 
So it's working, we're ticking along now. I'll add my pipe and we'll say, uh, what would I call this, on unsub. So it should just mirror that through there. And if I call this uh, subscription and I wait, set timeout, I'll give it three seconds and we'll subscribe, unsubscribe. So, is it pipe subscribe is not, what is this, where did this come from? Uh, yeah. What is happening right now? So oh, it doesn't, it, I'm sorry, it doesn't like return pipe to return all these things, source. Oh, duh, that's why. Sorry, I needed to do that. Now it's gonna be happier. All right. So it goes along and then we can see that I unsubscribed. Now, if we wanna to test to be like, oh, so I wanna make sure that this isn't um, giving me you know, false things, I'll bring in take. So we, so we took, and as you see, it didn't call that, right? So. This just again, what it's doing is it's an operator that's saying, okay, I'm gonna set up some state here and I'm gonna say that uh, I'm gonna flip that bit to false if you either error complete and then unfinalize, which is always called 100% of the time, whether you error complete or unsubscribe, um, I'm gonna check to see if, if that's still true. If it is, then call my, my handler. Could you, could you explain again when is finalized called? I thought it was only called when the observable completes. Maybe this, I'm wrong then. No, finalized finalize is called whenever uh, everything is torn down. So uh, after after error, after complete, or after unsubscribe, uh, finalize is called. So okay. it's a guar guaranteed to be called. And how would it work if um, it was like a hot observable, like if uh, using like a subject and or behavior subject and you have multiple sources, would it like only work once or? So with this, with a subject or multiple subjects, so if I was to take this and like share it or something like that, um, it would, it just depends. So like if this was, if I put the share before the on unsub, then like if I did a share like here, so this is going through a subject and it's hot once you subscribe. Um, if, if I did it before that, then you're gonna get unsubscribed this, this call for each unsubscription from the source. If I move it after, or I'm sorry, I said that wrong. If I put the share here, no, no, I, I just said that, all right, that is right. So if you put the, if you put, if you put the share here, you get, this gets called for each unsubscription. If you put the share after that over here, then it's only going to be called when everyone unsubscribes. Mm, makes sense, yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. That would solve our immediate problem. That's great. All right, I'll post that in the chat or something, I guess. Why was unsubbed never logged in the console? What? Oh, so unsubbed, oh, unsubbed was not unsubbed. logged in the, so right here, um, unsub is not logged in the console in this case because take is gonna complete this, right? So take says, oh, I'm complete. And then it calls this, flips this bit to false. And then when it finalizes, it says, oh, that wasn't an unsubscribe, that was a complete. Right, so this this is only going to get called if the if the consumer unsubscribes, not if the source completes or errors. Right. So if we got rid of that take three, it would be called upon three seconds, right? Yeah. Yes. We would see that console log. So, so you get up there and then. Boom. You lied to me. <laughs> well, no, these are half seconds. Thought, these are half seconds. I thought each number was each each second. Okay, you didn't lie to me. I'm happy. Thank you. All right. <laughs> uh, and one last question, Ben, please. Uh, now I wonder if I if the switch map completes the inner subscription completes, but it, it keeps listening to the source, right, to the main pipe, mm -hmm. like 
if I have to switch maps and I take until at the end, it will propagate the, the complete app in this in the parent switch maps. But so yeah, so, and it will so reach the source. If you if you have a so all of all of when you've got switch maps or merge maps, what they're doing is again, you've got a source coming in, you map it into a bunch of observables which fan out and then all come back together and go down the stream. So if when you have a take until, it kills everything above that, right? So if the wherever the take until is, it kills everything above that. When it when it gets a signal, it says unsubscribe from all of this, and then tell everybody after me that I'm complete. And so that's if you, if you put it after your uh, switch maps, it will kill all of your switch maps. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I have a short another question. Um, are there any plans for IHS to introduce like an like a pre-made back off we try? Um, yes, because there we have, is. Oh my goodness! Because so far we have like a like this back off we try IHS library, which has a lot of stars, I guess. But I was wondering if this comes out of the box uh, one time. <laughs> that would be really awesome. So that exists, and it exists. Let's see where are we at. Here we go. Add configurable delay. Oh yes. So <laughs> this is exactly. Oh, yes. And now, if you want to do exponential back off, you still have to do a little bit of math because we tried to make it as mm -hmm. configurable as possible. But uh, there's discussion about taking this object here and making a helper that will create the object for you. Um, mm -hmm. Also, awesome. we we might we might do that. So you'd see like a retry and then wrapped in parens like exponential back off and some arguments or something like that. Um, but yeah, so this is totally configurable. Uh, so so uh, what about jitters? Do I have to add it also myself, or is there some options for that? Uh, so what do you mean by jitters? Like um, when you, uh, like uh, that air have some margin of like couple milliseconds before or after, because if you have multiple um, back of retries at the same time and they have all the same uh, retry, then it's still not that great. So I want maybe introduce like one seconds of range, like a random range um, to it. Like uh, it's a jitter. I think it's called jitter. So you should be able to compose that because whatever th this is just like uh, it's this. Think of this as kind of like a, a, a switch map type function or, or kind of the same <laughs> as a, a catch error where it gives you the error, it tells you how many retries you have, and then any observable you return in here, uh, no matter what it is, uh, it waits for a signal from it before it actually does the retry. So if you were to have um, put like a subject in here or something that other things were feeding values into, or some composed observable that was externally produced, right, where this fed mm -hmm. into it and other, and other sources fed into it, and then it decided when it wanted to signal, you could totally compose that behavior. Um, that's or probably just not something random. That's, that's probably not something we would add into the core library because you know it's it's a pretty opinionated um, sort of operation. But um, but yeah, you should be able to compose that now. You could compose that with retry when right now, but uh, retry when um, it doesn't have this little retry count bit, uh, which can be reset with reset on success. Um, and which currently exists anyways, but like, uh, you can compose that re with retry when it's just a real pain in the ass. This, uh, we're hoping that this pattern, uh, kind of replaces retry when in the long run, because I find that a lot mm -hmm. of people get very confused by retry when, uh, which is my this first, actually awesome. my first addition to RxJS was retry when, and it was modeled after <laughs> Rx Java's retry when. So. Um, it'll be bittersweet to get rid of it if we can, but like I think that this solves more people's use cases, and uh, we should be able to land this here in version seven. It'd be like seven point three uh, when it comes out, which could be any day, uh, you know, because it's a minor release. So, I'm sorry, I'm just seeing that sandboxes should be renamed sender boxes. <laughs> I, I, I don't know where I deserve that from, but. Um, I have another short question. Um, is I just posting a short, a short snippet in the chat. Is there like a nicer way uh, to accomplish this behavior 
which basically says like for a loading spinner that uh, it should um, delay the whenever it's false uh, so that I don't have flashing UI. Uh, is there a, a way to accomplish uh, then this? Because I think it's kind of like a lot of boilerplate to accomplish a simple behavior like this. Okay, so I'm trying to understand the usage. So the usage of this is, uh, let's see. So basically in the, in the UX world, uh, there's two loading behaviors. Either you wait the loading because you know that the customer has a good internet connection, then you don't show the loading at all. But if you assume or you know that the user has a bad internet connection, then you have to uh, display the loading immediately. That's why when it's uh, true, then it's already passing through, but when it's false, you delay, so when the loading stops, you wait for another 500 milliseconds so that the UI doesn't flash in case the user still has good internet. So that's I the see. use so case for this. I think that um, I think that maybe you could do that with like uh, just again, I've got all this stuff in here. Um, you could do that with something like merge map or something like that. Like let me let me just think about this. So or so that so that you've got two things you've got like you know an observable that says i want to display a loading spinner right yes and it's then, a bool basic and, boolean subject or right right so but like let's just say this is responsible for displaying the loading spinner and it, it waits to to do a thing and then the, there's another one that's like load data right so if I was to gonna if I was gonna go there and say, I guess that what you may want to do is do something like if this if this had like a side effect. I did this in Scully. Um, I have to look. Up, I would have to look up the code how I did it. But basically, because if Scully is starting, we are getting the data asynchronously from the script and feed yeah. it in. And if we are online, so we are not, we don't have the data synchronous, and we are loading it from somewhere else, which is more or less the same thing you want. Right. So, so. I, I can look up the code. It, it's not the most simple thing to do, though, and it is easy to mess up. <laughs> well, it has to be like the three lines I have. <laughs> so I just wonder if some more elegant way to whip this up. Kind of like feels like a boilerplate for such a simple behavior. Yeah, I mean, like it's it's one of those things where um, I don't know. It's it's hard to know with without knowing your, your implementation. You could do a thing where you were like, okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna switch map a timer, like just merge them both. Oh boy, and um, in there and just say this is just take until I get a value from load data. Like you could do something mm, like that. Okay, I get this. Yeah, okay. still, it's it's still a lot of it's still a lot of boilerplate. It feels to me like something where there is really... an if operator. So you can, if you have like a, a choice moment, you can do if uh, some thing, you can do the delay, and otherwise you can load right away. Mm, yeah, that would I, replace I, the the this line here, I guess. I've tr I've also thought about it. I think the only thing that makes it really like complicated here is like this. You have to add this delay in, in a way, so I, and you have I to feel, pipe, pipe that delay. I I feel like um, this is one of those things where you need like an operator like on slow first value, and then you give like ah uh, yeah uh, Pro, a yeah. handler mm -hmm. to it, and then you say source, and then in there it would just end up being like source. Uh, let's see, new observable. Subscriber, I'm just going to put all this in there, and you'd be like, "All right, so I can set up a timeout that is, you know, whatever that wait period is." And in that set timeout, you're gonna you're gonna say, uh, "I want to call this function, right?" Or actually, I could just put that mm -hmm, in there. Mm -hmm. So that's your that's your timeout, and then in here, of course, you need to make sure that you tear that down if you ever unsubscribe. So clear interval ID, and then uh, you've got or I might even just add that to the subscriber. But then right here, you've got this source and subscribe subscriber. 
Um, believe it or not, when you do this directly, you don't actually need to return it in there, which is funny, but um, it's, it's top secret. Don't tell anybody I told you that. The, uh, so so you, you can subscribe to this thing. But like the other thing about this is you want to know if this has anything that's happened to it. So you can tap and just say, oh, if I get something, then clear interval ID, right? So, uh, and this will get called over and over again, but it's a no-op if that's already been cleared. So that's probably not a big deal. And so if you have this, what this should do is it should wait a, a specified amount of time um, before it fires. So like if I was gonna test this out, I'd be like, okay, so I'm gonna have my interval of, we'll start with the second, type to on slow first value and hit slow. And we'll just say that we're only gonna wait for 100 milliseconds and subscribe. Uh, console log. So there, it knows it's slow, right? But if I make this wait longer, it knows it, it's fine at that point, right? So let's just clear this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then, just to let you know, we are now in the time slot of our Friday evening social. You're more than welcome <laughs> to tag along. This meeting is going on for two hours now. Yeah, yeah, that's my fault. I'm no, 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 sorry. no, no problem, no problem at all. But. If anyone wants to drop off, feel free to leave. We are we didn't keep you here anyway, but um, we are now going over to the Friday evening social uh, with our special guest Ben Lash, who will probably still be talking <laughs> about RxS. <laughs> yeah. If he wants to, Ben, if you have something else to do, go do your business because we I, are. I, I'm supposed to be working, but you know. Uh, I'll, I'm, I'm, I'm free to, to socialize a little bit before I go. Um, but yeah, I've, I uh, do need to check work messages, make sure that I haven't uh, been fired, which is good. And then. They're probably not firing you. Pro you gotta, probably gotta, not. <laughs> You'll be hired immediately, but. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want them.